You may remember this sobering moment from Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell, a moment that suggested a turning point even among the most brazen partisan actors in government. There's no question, none, that President Trump is practically and morally responsible for provoking the events of the day. No question about it practically and morally responsible for the events of that day, one of the darkest days in the history of the United States. In fact, McConnell went on to claim, quote, I feel exhilarated by the fact that this fellow finally totally discredited himself, saying that Trump, quote, was pretty thoroughly discredited by this. He put a gun to his head and pulled the trigger. Couldn't have happened at a better time. When Trump dined with white nationalist Nick Fuentes, McConnell had this to say. If Donald Trump wins the Republican nomination, would you support him? Look. Let me just say again, there is simply no room in the Republican Party for anti-Semitism or white supremacy. And that would apply to all of the leaders in the party who will be seeking offices. No room in the party. More strong words from McConnell, who, despite years of shameless politicking on behalf of his party, seemed to have finally and definitively gotten off the Trump train. Which leads us to this. You have news on an endorsement for Trump? A big one indeed. Uh, Mitch McConnell, the Republican leader, endorsing Donald Trump, the presumptive nominee. And I'll be honest here, I very, very naively thought that when Mitch McConnell came out and admitted that Trump was responsible for January 6th, when he admitted that he was exhilarated by Trump discrediting himself, when he admitted that there was no room in the party for him, that maybe, just maybe, McConnell was willing to put the country above his brazen allegiance to his party. <laughs> I couldn't have been more wrong. And look, of course this should come as no surprise. Mitch McConnell has, for the entirety of his life in politics, been as shameless a partisan hack as you could possibly find. Always and only putting party above country, proving the worst opinions that Americans have about their own government, engendering distrust and dishonesty, and weakening the state of our country, all for petty partisan political gain. There are few people who have had such a lasting, detrimental impact on our government. Mitch McConnell is at the top of that list. I mean, let's be honest. If you want to know what kind of person Mitch McConnell is, he just endorsed the guy who attacked his own wife. You got to get Mitch McConnell to be a lot tougher. Mitch McConnell. You can have Mitch McConnell and his wife, Coco. Coco Chow, you can have them both. Yep, nothing like throwing support behind the guy who does that on a stage in public. Although I gotta say, groveling at the feet of the guy who attacks your wife seems to be a recurring theme in the GOP. You may remember this feud between Trump and Ted Cruz. He is choking like a dog because he's losing so badly. We have to put him away tomorrow. This man is a pathological liar. A narcissist at a level I don't think this country's ever seen. Hold that Bible high, puts it down, and then he lies. Donald is a bully. The man is utterly amoral. Donald, you're a sniveling coward and leave Heidi the hell alone. Only to be followed, of course, by Ted Cruz kowtowing to Trump at every turn. In fact, one of the most famous photos of Ted Cruz is this one, which in a world of small men doing anything in their desperate pursuit of power, may actually be the most desperate. You may also remember Mitch McConnell saying this line during his retirement speech. I turned 82 last week. <clears throat> The end of my contributions are closer than I'd prefer. The reason he said that is because he recognized that he wouldn't be able to contend with the onslaught of attacks aimed at him by Donald Trump. And so even though this guy dedicated his life to shamelessly entrenching the power of his own party, that party would ultimately turn on him in the end in its servile fealty to Trump. And yet still that wouldn't be enough to display an ounce of integrity. Still that wouldn't be enough to do the right thing, even as he acknowledged that he was being abandoned by the very people who he'd spent his life shilling for Still, he wouldn't sacrifice any shred of dignity if it meant helping the people screwing him over one last time. So look, McConnell may have timed his retirement to prevent Trump from being able to demand his ouster and sending him off on a humiliating note that would sully his legacy. But remember, Mitch McConnell's legacy is Trump. He had the chance to vote to convict Trump after January 6th and to whip votes to reach that two-thirds threshold to finally, definitively prevent another Trump term. He chose not to. He ensured Trump's viability in the future because he was too incapable of ever ever, ever putting country over party, meaning that McConnell will end his Senate career with exactly the legacy that he deserves, enabling the person who would ultimately destroy his reputation. Before you go, to see more content from MSNBC, make sure to subscribe to this channel by clicking the link right here on this screen. And you can also follow the link to see some exclusive content only on TikTok.